All right. So it's been a little bit since y'all have seen Ab on here. Uh, she had to miss last week. It's cool. We brought in Cam off the bench. She dropped 30. Now we got Ab back <laughs> in to drop the regular 30. Ab, how have you been? Um, and are you ready to talk about the Cavs again? You know, I'm thinking I'm going to put up 41 like the Karis Donovan <laughs> game where they both uh, dropped a 40 piece. Uh, so that's that's what I'm feeling today. But it does feel like it's been a while. I know it was only a week off, but I feel like so much has happened since then. I know Cam, Cam came in and killed it for me. And um, I, I, I was disappointed to not be able to talk actually about the whole Lakers and LeBron and everything with that game, which was uh, just an exciting moment in general, it all, as it always is. So um, it was good to see you guys kind of break that down. But happy to be back and talking once again after a win. They did it for us. They got a win right before we record so that we have positive things to say. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna say that we contribute to the Cavs bottom line here. I really because think so. <laughs> when we record, they tend to win before. You know what I mean? I feel like they know what's up there, but there's been a lot to talk about, and I feel like we are the home podcast of the Lamar Stevens hype. Like I'm pretty sure other podcasts were in on it, but nobody else was in on it like <laughs> we were. And we not even gonna call it the Lamar hype. We're going to call it Lamar James because that's what he be doing out there. Um, but I Lamar, died when you tweeted that. It made my whole night. I was like, yes, this is it. This is the tweet. But Lamar James did it again. 18 points. Great defense on Luka. Yeah, Luka got 30, sure. But how many shots did he take? He took a lot of shots to get the 30. You know what I mean? Got bailed out by some foul calls. It felt like any time that you just – touched Evan Mobley it was a foul on Evan Mobley which is yes. wild right but that's just being a young player in the NBA going up against somebody like that but you know I've already talked about this game on this channel what, what were your takeaways from that game that performance by the Cavs because this was one people were concerned about right on the yeah. road we know this team's road record versus a a very star he's not a wing technically he's a point guard but a wing scorer essentially in Luka um one of the best players an MVP candidate and you go in and you not just win you dominate this game yeah yeah, I was very nervous going into the game, to be honest. I obviously, with all the things that you just listed about what made me nervous about the Mavericks and just how we had been playing, how we had been struggling on the road, the energy really hadn't been there in recent games. I mean, the game before that was the game against the Spurs where we looked flat almost the entire game until the end when we made a little bit of a run and tried to push for a win and weren't able to get it. So I was a little bit nervous coming into the game, but you could tell from the first minute they were just coming out full energy. I think we went up 16-2 to start the game. It was like a crazy run at the beginning, um, which was nice to see. That is not the type of energy we have been starting with. Um, and then obviously, as you said, Lamar looked great, but I think it was really how they decided to use him um, that helped. It, they usually typically will just kind of stick him in the corner on offense and be like, all right, we know he's not a big threat, so we're not going to really move him around or use him in different ways. I felt like he was setting screens, cutting, like moving around a lot more, which I think made the Mavericks have to defend the Cavs a little bit differently. Um, and then it just all worked out. He had 18 points. I think he still struggled from three a little bit. He only had one three, but it did come at a very clutch moment at the end. So appreciated that. Um, but overall, I just – I loved – not just the the energy from him, Jarrett, Evan on defense, they were, you know, playing top notch against it, even like switching onto Luca, both of them just they did an incredible job. So I couldn't be more happy with what we just watched. Yeah. And I think what he brings is something that I think they want to look for in a player that they trade for. Um, to to fill that wing or or to add to death at that position. Because he does have you know, I, I, they they joke about it with him and Neto where they say they both got that dog in them. And one's yeah. big dog, one's little dog, right? Yeah. But that's a true thing that they need, right? You know, because um, Donovan, he's not he's not 
angry guy, right? He's not, you know, a, a emotional guy. Neither He's is like a puppy dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're both like pretty like and in uh, Evan Mobley and and Jared Allen. Like Jared's one of yeah. the nicest guys in the world. He's not sure. really gonna be, you know, one of those guys that's gonna get in somebody's chest or, or do some of that annoying stuff, right? Like the thing that made the Warriors great, especially early on was that they had Draymond Green and then they mm-hmm. were able to get guys like Iguodala who were able who were willing to be pesk, right? Because that's not yes. Clay's personality, that's not Steph's personality, that's not I mean, Harrison Barnes. It feels like that was a while ago he was a part yes. of that dynasty. But yeah, like Harrison Barnes, that original core and then even that second core, that just wasn't the personality of that team. So mm-hmm. You needed those guys in there to kind of have that, right? And that gave them that real roundedness. I feel like there's a lane here for Stevens because of his mentality. Um, you know, you see it in the fourth quarter where not, he not only gets that three, but before he gets that three, plays excellent defense on Luka, mm-hmm. very, like, tough, not going to back down kind of defense. And it seems like the more you challenge him, the better his defense gets. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, of it, there was another game where I felt like he played great defense. Uh, was it against the Bucks down the stretch? But it was somebody he was – no, because he didn't play in that second game. But – Right. I, I forget the example, but I think it might have been against the Lakers. But he plays this good defense down the stretch. He's willing to bark a little bit. I think that is a underrated element of what this team needs. And I think they need probably one more person like that. And, and I think they'll be all right. But he, 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 it's so needed. And you can tell when he's out there yeah. how much help yeah. it brings the team. Well, Donovan, I think it was Donovan. I can't remember if it was him or Darius talked about how – Lamar is not afraid to call like out the superstars on the team and be like, Hey, you should have done this here. Or like he, he treats himself as a legitimate role player on this team um, and knows the value he brings. And he's, he's not afraid to say it and hold other people accountable on the team, which I think is, is hard to do. I think we've talked about this on here. It's hard to do when you're, you're not in, you know, one of those superstars to speak up to them and, and have a, a real opinion and something to say. And so I think it does add a lot of value that he is able to be that guy. And you're totally right. He does do that on defense where you can see it, like him pushing himself further and further throughout the game because he just wants it so badly. And it is, it's a great intensity to see that we, we very much need at that position. Yeah. And I feel like he, if he could just be a bit of a better shooter, yes, I think he <laughs> would be the starter there. Um, yeah. but he needs to just, even his buckets, he gets you like some sneaky bucket games. Yeah. He gets you like 12, 18 every once in a while when you're not looking here. Yeah. Um, but one of the things we're talking about, right, since this was a road game, was the road record. And I think it's easy to look at things in isolation. Um, and we were discussing this, right? Why are the Cavs so bad on the road? And then we started looking at the road records for everybody else in the league. And we're starting to realize Oh, everybody's bad on the road this year, right? Everybody. Um, the Raptors, right? The Raptors are the 10 seed right now. I believe they're under five, two games under 500. They're like 10 and two at home, and they're like three and 11 on the road. Um, you know, I think there's what? I think we discovered only five or six teams that have an above 500 record on the road. What what is it that you think contributes to these road records for the NBA teams that we don't really consider as just fans watching every day? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this on here before, too. Just I think this comes with having a young team in general. But for any team, when you are traveling, when you're making trips across across the country, sometimes traveling like every single day or every other day for, you know, if you have a decent road stretch that's happening, Um, That can be really grueling and hard to adjust to. And like I said, I think it probably affects a younger team a lot more than it than it would an older team that's a little bit more accustomed to it. They know what types of routines work for them. I think it's just hard to come out with that same energy when you're just constantly moving around and and operating on a a different schedule than you're used to and you can see at home once they feel more comfortable they feel more in their routine the energy that they can bring is just completely different yeah and it's kind of like it's interesting because like you had that bubble year right and then you had the half bubble year 
mm-hmm. then you had the first season kind of back last year where it was just like it was normal from the start. And yeah. I bet that had a lot of novelty at first where it's like, hey, man, we get to like play in front of crowds. Now it's like it's back to being a mundane thing, right? You know, yeah. there was a time. And this is going to be a fun thing to describe to, like, people once we get older. We're like, a pl- when it was like, hey, they're going to have 2,000 fans in the audience. And that yeah. became a <laughs> must-see game. Like, everybody watched that Knicks uh, Hawks series because they had fans in the garden again, right? Like, you know. Not the virtual, like, cardboard fans yeah. anymore. <laughs> Where it was like, it was a novelty. It was this thing to get excited about. Every night you're playing in front of a crowd. Now it's back to being mundane. And I think yeah. league-wide, we're seeing um that hit it's like a uh, energy crash like when you drink uh, coffee and you crash yeah. it's like they were so up for these fans every every day um when they were first back and it was new for a while mm-hmm. and now it's like oh yeah it's just a game in front of fans <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know especially once you get into the middle of the season you know where it's like yeah. All right, December, January, February. It's not close enough to playoffs yet to really feel like you got to start putting your your foot on the gas. So you're just kind of coasting through for a little while, which, I mean, a lot of teams do. If we remember those Cavs teams from the LeBron days, they coasted through those regular seasons. And then once you got, you know, a little bit later, March, April, you could start to see them really put their foot on the gas and try to make everything come together, which had a lot to do with having the greatest player in the world. But, you know, that kind of (laughs) helped. Yeah, it helps when you have LeBron on your roster. Yeah. And it's also, after that, like, the NBA season kind of officially starts for everybody, like, even the casual fan. I feel like after Christmas Day, too. Yes, after so, like, football, too. <laughs> yeah. So it's like Christmas Day, that's one start, and then it's like, boom, you get to the All-Star break, and then it's back. Once you're back from the All-Star break, it's real for everybody because that's, yep. that's the only thing on. So there's that. But speaking of being on the road, the Cavs won't be on the road for a while because they have a big homestand coming up. They play, they're play; they playing some pretty big teams here. I think they're playing the Bucks. Um, I believe, uh, what, the Mavs are on the schedule again. Yep. Looking for Raptors. Revenge. Raptors who are terrible yep. on the road. So it's about right. time. We'll you know, and you got to be Milwaukee at some point, right? Like they can't just sweep you the whole year. Um, so Didn't a lot of beat Mil- Milwaukee last year. I feel like we at least one time, I feel like I remember beating them in the regular season. Then, last I think there was the one play where like, there was a the one game where Giannis got dunked on by Evan Mobley. I think I was, was at like, that one. I feel like I'm remembering being there and us winning. <laughs> yeah. But they play the Bucks. They have all these. What do you expect from this homestand? Because their their home record can't stay crazy forever, right? They're undefeated when right. Donovan Mitchell plays at home. Um, they haven't lost to any Eastern Conference opponents. Now that they have this long stretch of Eastern Conference opponents um, for like the next week and a half, I believe. What are your expectations for them coming out of this stretch? Yeah. I think these are the ones that you really need to get um, because obviously like it's okay to lose to the Bucks on the road. It's okay to lose to the Raptors on the road. Like those things you almost kind of expect because you're in their environment and those are very good teams that play us very well. Um, so when we play them in our house, like you really want to try to, to get those wins. So I'd like us to go on a bit of a run here. I think it'll be important, especially as we get into the thick of things in January and February. February when things continue to be a little bit mundane, you got to take these home stretches and and just take care of business, which we know we can do because, like you said, our our home record's pretty awesome. And when Donovan Mitchell is there, I, he more than anyone feeds off of that crowd. He just he's trying to hold back his smile the entire game as the MVP chants are going in in Rocket Mortgage. So um, yeah, I'm I'm expecting some some big wins on the board here, even against the tough teams. You know, it's crazy, too, Donovan Mitchell. He is so much better than he was in Utah, and he was a good player, a really good yeah. player in Utah. And it's interesting. I'm starting to hear, like, the national perspective of him change where people are kind of saying, like, yeah, he was, like, good in Utah, but, like, he is that guy in Cleveland, right? Mm-hmm. It's different. Um, I mean, that first half he had against the Mavs where I think... 27. 27 points, 9 yep. or 10 from the floor. Dog. Insane. 5 for 5 for 3. Um, and then he makes... 
that uh, like what really sold that game for me was there was a moment where like the Mavs were kind of making a little bit of a comeback. I think they brought it within nine, and then Donovan Mitchell comes in on the next possession. Yep. He gets like a little pick and roll step back three, and he just smacks it. And you see Luka Doncic go from this to like <laughs> what so am defeating. I gonna do? <laughs> um, and that's an MVP candidate that he just defeated, like just deflated in that moment. And he's been so much better than I feel like people even know and so much more impactful. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to see what he's going to do here at home because, like, you know, he has some big games here where, mm-hmm. you know, you, you put up a good number against the Milwaukee Bucks. That's going to change people's perspective about you as far as the MVP race goes. Yeah. And I, I was going to say, I think the biggest difference between – like Donovan and Utah and Donovan here too, is just the like defensive effort that he gives here compared to what he was giving in Utah. It's just, it is like night and day, a completely different player. And I think you listen to the Bill Simmons podcast too. He always talks about this on just, he didn't think he had the, the, like the defensive mindset in him that he has now. He was like, I just didn't think he was that guy until he came here. And he's like, Oh, I guess it was always in him. It just uh, didn't show up in Utah. (laughs) Yeah, defensively, he's been pretty good. Um, yeah. And he has had that effort out there, the leadership. You know, it's interesting to watch because Gobert is in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that, like, when you watch Minnesota, you're like, man, it don't look like they believe that Rudy Gobert is, like, this special player. They yeah. just think he's another dude on the team. Mm-hmm. And then you see Donovan Mitchell, and it's immediately obvious when everybody's like, nah, he need the ball. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, it, at the beginning of the year, it was interesting because that wasn't a dynamic yet. But now it's like, okay, let a team get like a get like a run, bring a 15-point lead into like a six-point lead. Next yep. thing you know, you getting this ball to Donovan, okay? Like, just do something, Donovan, please. And then yep. he just does something incredible. Or if you get down by too much, it becomes, where's Donovan? Get Donovan the ball. Let's get Donovan involved. Um, yep. and, and he has become that leader. You see him, I think he was mic'd up. I don't know if this was on national TV or if this was, yeah, I think this was on the Lakers game. He was mm. mic'd up. And he was basically like a vet out there, right? Like telling, like Darius, like, look, man, this is going to happen. This is yeah. what you're doing wrong. Like when we step here, you need to come here. Like whenever him or Lamar Stevens is mic'd up, you're like, oh, okay, these are the two leaders on the team. These are who, yeah. who's telling everybody because you can hear Lamar like yelling at um Evan about about his placement on defense. He's like, no, you put Jared in a bad position. Now he has to cut, and now he's going to get a foul because of that. You got to just slide and be where you're supposed to be. So it's interesting like how leadership happens because a lot of the times it is best player on the team becomes right. a leader. But sometimes they're both so young too. like both Lamar and Donovan are not that old to be Mm -hmm. like a veteran leader. But that's how young this team is where those guys kind of we don't have uh, other than like a a Ricky or a Kevin who are, you know, a bit older, who are definitely like uh, Ricky for sure is like a a leader on the team, Um, obviously hasn't been out there. But I think it's kind of interesting the the dynamic that's taken place with such a young team that someone who's like 25 years old can be like a really veteran vocal leader on that court yep and you just mentioned ricky rubio and Mm -hmm. i think that's another interesting thing to think about here when it comes to the Cavs going forward is ricky rubio because that's going to change and adjust some things and i'm wondering if this is why they're hesitant to make any trades right right now yeah. with the wing position because they're like okay we're gonna see how ricky impacts things like what this because you don't you might not want to trade karis mm-hmm. until you see how he plays on a, in a lineup with ricky rubio out there just to make sure you're like okay yeah. maybe he can be the guy who could squeeze some efficiency out of him um with ricky potentially coming back within the next 30 days here is we're anticipating he just got cleared for five on five um, mm-hmm. a couple days ago so it's it's coming soon What do you want to see as far as things around Ricky um, with him coming back to be sure about something, to be sure about this roster in general before you make trades? Yeah. Well, first of all, that's a great point that I hadn't thought about that maybe they are holding off on a trade because they want to see that 
um, just knowing how big, big Ricky was for that second unit last year. Like I hadn't even considered that maybe they were waiting on things just to see. Um, and I think the the number one thing you want to see from, from Ricky coming off the bench is there, there's just like not a lot of offense coming from that bench unit right now. So if he can at least help facilitate, like I know that's his, his first job is to facilitate, but he's also a decent scorer. And there were moments last year. It's funny on my, I have a time hop that will show me my tweets from a year ago or two years ago. I have a lot of Ricky tweets coming up from last year right now where (laughs) I was just like, man, this guy is so good. Like he had some massive scoring games too. And I think, I mean, we saw last, night even in the win it was the starting lineup that was scoring I think Karis had 11 points Jetty might have had like two and that was it like we don't have a lot of scoring or not Jetty um who had had two I think Um, Isaac had two Isaac had two yeah it was Isaac (laughs) Isaac had two. So it's like, we really need to start getting a little Mm -hmm. bit more out of that bench. Um, I mean, if Kevin Love's not hitting, if, you know, Isaac's not hitting, it's just, it's a little bit dry out there and we can't expect, you know, Donovan to have 35, 40 point games all the time. It's not always going to look like that. So definitely hoping more of that from Ricky um, and just the the presence he brings. And I think him coming back is going to be better for Darius too, because He's being put out there, and his offensive production has been dipping. But it's like some of these lineups he's out there with doesn't mm-hmm. do him anything offensively, right? Yeah. Like, so he he has to be – like, you can't sacrifice and put Donovan Mitchell in a worse offensive situation because he's your best scorer. You need to have him in the best offensive situation possible. So Darius ends up right now having to bite the bullet because then they need a point guard in their second unit. He has yeah. to kind of facilitate – but nobody's spacing the floor on the second yeah. unit. So it's all going to crunch up on him. And then whenever he drives, there's no kick threat right now. Like even Kevin Love, he's not as much as a kick threat as he usually is. Mm-hmm. I think once you get somebody else in there, and then I think Ricky's better for that because the for that second unit, he scores differently, right? He's more yeah. of an attacker. He's bigger. He can get to the cup a little bit easier. He's a better finisher than Darius is, and he's like more of a mid-range guy, so he's not going to be so predicated on needing that space to score. Um, and he doesn't have to take as many bad shots. Like that's what happens with Darius is he ends up having to take these bad threes because he gets pressed out. Um and then there's no help, and then maybe there's like a Rolo screen that they can run over there yeah. or, or a Kevin Love screen, but it's dead on arrival, and, and they just kind of trap him that way, and he ends up in a bad spot, and then you end up with like an Isaac a Coral 3 or something like that. I think with yeah. Ricky out there, you're going to get better shots for not only the people in the second unit, but you'll get Darius some better shots. And I think yeah. when what we're seeing as a Darius shooting slump will start to correct itself as he can take more efficient shots when he's with the right mm-hmm. packages. That's a good point because Darius has been in a weird position. I know people have been very hard on him, which I do feel kind of bad about because it's 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 been for a lot of different reasons, some being the ones you just listed um, and still kind of, I think, adjusting to Donovan being that primary guy in the starting lineup and figuring out where Darius is going to fit in. And I feel like it was almost glossed over because when Darius came back from his eye injury, their first few games, he and Donovan were clicking together. Like it was perfect. And we were like, wow, this looks seamless and there's no issues. And then after a couple games, it kind of started to, to not be as perfect as it looked in those first ones. So I think we almost forgot like, oh yeah, this is still two guys that are going to have to learn how to play together. And especially Darius just adjusting from the previous role he had on this team to his current role. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, again, it's some adjustment here. I think also sometimes it's just he has to take some awkward shots here. Like, Karras hasn't been as reliable as they want, Um, so that's really affected. So in games where Karras isn't going or Jetty isn't going, now he's extra put in a bad position. Right. Um, He takes a lot of – I think he does take a lot of bad shots because he feels like he has to. He's like, no one else is going to do it, so here I am. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so it's it's just – I want to see him – Get in because what makes Donovan better is like he didn't become a different player overnight. It's yeah. just he's in better spots and he's in a yes. better situation. And now defensively, he's in a system he's buying into. So he's playing better defense. You know, he's re energized in that way. Um, 
And I think the same thing can happen for Darius here on the offensive end. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I harp on with this team and why I want them to make a trade for, for a bigger wing player, regardless of if he – because I think everybody gets the idea of whoever we trade needs to be the starter and needs to, like, hold it down. I just want extra depth there and options because one of the things I'm worried about with this team, especially in a, a playoff situation, is when you go up against teams that are physical, right? Like last night, the Mavs aren't a big physical team. They're a very small ball-oriented team. Luka's probably like the biggest guy that they have out there, and he's the point guard. Mm -hmm. And those teams, the Cavs are going to be able to dominate because they got the height um, and, and they have – they have a size advantage there, but some of these teams were like the Bucks are probably the biggest example of yeah. a big bully team, right? Mm -hmm. And those are the teams where, you know, there, there's a saying, like Evan Mobley right now is tall man, but he's not big man. He's like mm -hmm. on his way to big man, but he's still tall man. Mm -hmm. And the Bucks have nothing but big man. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Even yeah. their small guys are big guys. Like Bobby Portis, you know what I mean? Like they have yeah. nothing but big men up there and I think that's the big Achilles heel to this team is like when you go like obviously wing scores that's going to be its own problem but that has a fix but those bigger physical teams that's where Evan becomes less effective defensively yeah. and offensively that's where Jarrett becomes less effective defensive and offensively and then when those two aren't at their peak efficiency level, that's when things start to fall apart around the pick and roll, how they want to play mm -hmm. it, um, and then Donovan becomes less efficient. Like, that's what I worry about with this team. Yeah. Is there something like that for you that you worry about? Well, I do think that's a great point because we saw that in the Bucks game, the, the lack of physicality that we had against them. It was just like they bullied us pretty much the entire game. Um, and that is is definitely going to be a big concern. I, I think my other concern is, and this also has to do with the, the wing, when we don't have a threat at shooting there, it's like – defenses are like we just know no like this guy is not going to be taking shots if we can have just a guy who is like a little bit of a threat offensively on the wing it i think it just changes the way teams have to defend um this Cavs team and i just feel like it, if we can get like you said it doesn't have to be a starter it doesn't have to be the best guy on the team just a guy it could it could really just change the threats that we have yeah, definitely, definitely. Again, it, it's that mentality thing too, right? Well, I want like if I could just clone Lamar Stevens, I would clone him, right? Yeah, <laughs> and just get right. another one. Right? Give everyone his mentality. Just pass yeah. it to them. <laughs> because I feel like that's one of the things where it's like I don't. They're not. I'm. I'm not punishing them for not being like the meanest guys. Like I don't want them to be like right. the trailblazers in old 2000 or anything like that. Right. But I do <laughs> want more of that more players with that right and again like it yeah. don't take a lot it only took two for the warriors um but they need that they need they need somebody who's willing to get in there in these nasty rough games where in the playoffs you're gonna have these games where fouls aren't called it's gonna get real physical maybe you need oh, yeah. to set the tone a little bit right lamar uh -huh. can come in there and do that but if lamar comes in there and does that and get ejected who's that who else is there right yeah you need that right that's why guys like pat beverly have long careers jared dudley he has a long career. Uh, Montrez Harrell. Like, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lane in the NBA clearly for guys like this. Draymond Green's probably the best example of it. Yeah. And the Cavs need to find their version of that, I think. Yeah. Well, you're also right on. I, I know I feel like a homer when I say this, that our guys don't get calls. But I feel like our stars are not at the level where the refs are giving them the calls that other stars get. And I think we saw that definitely last night. Evan, I feel like Darius still doesn't get the calls that he needs. It's just it gets a little frustrating sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember it was like, what Kyrie didn't start getting them calls until like his second year when LeBron was yeah. here. Like you got to earn that level of respect, which I just they're they're too young. <laughs> It is sometimes I wouldn't give him the call because he just finishes through it. But, yeah. you know, it, it, with Evan, I'll just be feeling bad because Evan just be standing there. They just be running right into Evan. It's just be like, oh, how's that a foul on him, dog? <laughs> like, yeah. and, and then he'll be yelling. He'll be yelling. He's so polite about it. He's like, all right, man. 
whatever. He's like, sir, that was a. <laughs> but you see Kevin Love get one of them files. Kevin loses his mind. He, <laughs> he cannot stand. They are like, wait, Kevin loses his mind and JB loses his mind. JB it's does. funny because it this is. team really doesn't complain about foul calls a ton. But, like, Kevin Love and JB might be the most complaining about foul call people I have ever seen. JB is <laughs> ridiculous with it. Sometimes he be dead wrong be arguing about the foul. And it's just, you can see him get started, too. When he, he, he has that yeah. little smirk on his face. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I see what it's going to be. Uh, and then by the fourth quarter, he is irate about something, dog. Like it. That's <laughs> why in his post-game press conferences, he never has a voice. He can't even speak anytime. He's always, like, crackly, just trying to get words out. Kevin definitely does, too. I, I haven't really thought about it, but. I think he's like, I'm too old for this. I've been around a long time. I'm 100 years old. He's like, I know a foul. I've been in the league for 200 years. (laughs) Like, stop it. (laughs) So funny. Like, but it it was, if you ever, if y'all ever get the chance on a league pass, when the Cavs play at Madison Square Garden, watch the Madison Square Garden feed because they they have mics close to the coaches. And you get to hear like if I you like listen that. closely, if you get to hear what they're saying, and I remember I was listening to that, I had my headphones in, I was like in the car watching the game, and I was like, "My God, JV, <laughs> it's every play, Jesus. it's every play." You're you like hear, seeing your energy. <laughs> no, he is. It's every play. Oh, I'm man. like the only person I've ever seen worse was when I was at Youngstown and Bo Pelini, but that's a whole nother <laughs> monster when it comes to like how he talks to raps. That's another story for another day. But I feel like we covered a lot here with the Cavs. I feel like we gave them a sufficient attack of the Cavaliers. <laughs> um, this is going to be it for today's show. I'm Quincy Carrier. This is Ab. Make sure you check her out. SI. Um, she does the Browns Digest there. The link's in her descri- in the description down below. Also, follow her on Twitter at Abby underscore Mueller app underscore. Also, a girl from Cleveland podcast. Check it out on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Music, anywhere where podcasts Everywhere. are available. <laughs> they are. That must be nice. I wish somebody did that for video where it's like you just got to upload it here and they put it yeah. everywhere. That would it be is nice. really nice because you just yeah one one click and it's it's out in the world that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it used to be back and this is gonna make me sound old when you want to upload on different <laughs> back in my like day. different <laughs> formats and everything like some expected like some allowed you to upload an MPEG others was like you gotta convert it to three GP oh, to geez. upload it to here it was a mess back in the day but now uh, it's not so much now you just have to upload to a bunch of platforms and i feel like there's like terms about what you can and can't upload on the same two but that that's a whole nother conversation (laughs) but i want to thank y'all for watching everybody have a great day have a good night